Okay, congratulations. Your uh, appointment comes at a, to a pretty exciting time and, and place in terms of the issues that are going on with regards to China. The, their growth in their economy and in their influence in the world is uh, really in a, an amazing development to watch from a historical perspective. And by the way, I would just share, as I did with you on the phone when we spoke about this, uh, you know, I don't, and I think the President has said this, our policy isn't to contain China. On the contrary, I think we see a growing economy that we can be trade partners with. I mean, a billion people we can sell our products and our services to. Uh, we look, hopefully, to a China that uses its increased influence and its military capabilities to be a partner. I mean, in, in addressing some of the global issues that our world confronts, uh, just think about how much easier the issue of Iran and North Korea and Syria would be if, if China were engaged in a positive way in trying to influence the direction of that. But there's also some real challenges, some of which have been highlighted here today. And in particular, I think the Chinese use the term the new model of major country relations. And it seems that the way at least they define it right now is, is that, uh, number one, that the U.S. would, it would basically begin to erode or abandon some of its uh, regional commitments that it's made to places like Japan and the Philippines and Taiwan and, and even South Korea to some extent. And the other is something you'll hear them often say. In fact, I think at Davos, uh, Senator McCain was asked this question by someone in the audience. Why is the U.S. always interfering in the internal affairs of other countries? And when it comes to China, that usually is this issue of human rights. And so I wanted to, there's a, the late ambassador Mark Palmer in a book, uh, Breaking the Real Axis of Evil, he argued that U.S. ambassadors in places like China should be freedom fighters and that U.S. embassies should be islands of freedom open to all those who share the values of freedom, human rights, and democracy. You've begun to answer that question here today. It was asked on some specific topics, but do you agree that the U.S. Embassy in China should be an island of freedom uh, and that one of your primary jobs there will be demonstrating to China's peaceful advocates of reform and, and democracy that the United States stands firmly with them? Going to your earlier point, Senator, I read your uh, speech in Korea. I thought it was very uh, perceptive, and, it, and it made points which I would work, like to work uh, on with you. Um, with spec, and I, clearly, the United States symbolically is an island of freedom. Um, you asked to some degree the specific question: Should it physically <laughs> to the embassy? That's a question I, I'm going to have to take back to and, and work with the administration on. I do not know the administration policy precisely on that point. But I will determine to find it. My basic principle is, you bet, we're there to stand up for human rights and freedoms generally in the world. Um, but with respect to the, that, your specific question, let me, let me take that back. Well, just as, as you do take that issue back, uh, I think you'll find broad consensus on this committee and, and, and I hope in the administration that our embassy should be viewed as an ally of those within Chinese society that are looking to express their fundamental rights to speak out and, and, to, uh, and, and to worship freely, et cetera. On that point, um, uh, the Chinese government has detained uh, over 1,000 unregistered Christians in the past year. They've closed what they term illegal meeting points. They've prohibited public worship activities. And additionally, by the way, unregistered, and this is amazing, unregistered Catholic clergy, uh, unregistered with them, they remain in detention. Some have even disappeared. I would ask, would you be open, if you're confirmed, to attending a worship service in an unregistered Catholic or Protestant church within China? Senator, I'm going to do my very best to um, represent our country um, constructively, seriously, engage, and listen in, in a way which I think is most effective. Um, I um, will take actions which I th hope accomplish that objective. And um, with respect to where I go and do not go, um, that's a matter of judgment. And it's one I'm going to be thinking about very carefully about what I, where I go and where I do not go. Um, the goal here is to be effective. A major goal, as we've discussed here today, is the protection of, of human rights. It's probably the bedrock fundamental goal, <laughs> because so much springs from that. <clears throat> and it's a goal that I will espouse fully and use whatever way I can to accomplish that goal effectively. But I, I let me not answer that directly because I don't know the degree to which that, uh, that makes sense at this point. First of all, I'm not confirmed. <laughs> I'm not there. And, um, and this is frankly not a point I've discussed 
with with the administration, but I, I I will take that back too. Well, and I and I'm respectful of the of the reality that in order to have the operating space to be effective, uh, you don't want to necessarily be at the mm -hmm. direct and constant conflict with the host government. On the other hand, there comes a point, I would argue, Senator, and I hope you keep this in mind, where that effectiveness uh, cannot come at the at the expense of our fundamental. Uh, rights as uh, the fundamental rights of the people of that country and in particular what we stand for as a nation and I would just caution that again as we as you see the Chinese attitude towards some of these issues uh, their attitude basically is mind your own business on these issues if you want to have a good relationship with us you need to stop speaking out on these grotesque human rights violations and I hope it never becomes the policy of the United States to look the other way on these issues for the purpose of uh, achieving a more uh, uh, friendly operating environment, because that, I hope, is not the definition of this new model of major country relations. I think if the Chinese are willing to use their newfound economic and even military abilities to be a productive member of the, of the global uh, community, uh, committing themselves to things like freedom of navigation, respect for human rights, I think that would be an extraordinary development for mankind. If, on the other hand, this newfound power is used to turn their neighbors into tributary states, and to continue to oppress people within their own country, I think we have a big problem and a major, major challenge. And so, again, I, I, would, I know you need to go back with the, to the administration on some of these issues, but I hope this is not a matter of, of debate. I hope that it is clear that we want a good relationship with China, but not at the expense of the fundamental human rights that define us as a nation and as a people. And I think you're going there at a very unique time uh, where, where the freedom activists in that country are looking for an advocate and a spokesperson that will stand with them strongly. They look to America to be that. And you have a unique and historical opportunity to do that, and I, and I hope it's one that you'll embrace. But, but thank you for thank your you, willingness. Thank you, I appreciate that very much. Thank you.